Earthbed. Prevention, detection, and treatment of diseases of the digestive system. Good day, learners. This is Earth Pen. Since we are through with the processes that happens in our digestive system, this time we will now educate ourselves to the different diseases that could occur in our digestive system, known as the gastrointestinal diseases. In our modern ways of living, the trend of food consumption shows that the intake of fast foods, alcohol, and food with high calories increases, while the consumption of green leafy vegetables are slowly being neglected by many. This trend of food consumption is the reason why gastrointestinal diseases are very common these days. Again, these gastrointestinal diseases are the diseases that could possibly occur in the human digestive system. And for today's video, we will individually learn about the following diseases. Diarrhea Constipation Hepatitis Gallstones Peptic ulcer Hemorrhoids and Appendicitis These disorders have a major common symptom and this is if there is a change in the bowel movement. This could be observed when you have skipped the certain hour of the day that you usually excrete waste or when you still feel full even after hours from eating. Aside from that, there are worse symptoms such as a severe abdominal pain and heartburn. Some cases do have symptoms like sudden loss of weight, or presence of blood in the stool, which usually happens to a person with endured gastrointestinal disease. And so to proceed to our common diseases of the digestive system, let us first learn about diarrhea. Diarrhea is when loose or watery stools is excreted from the body three times or more in a day. This disorder occurs when the absorption ability of the large intestine is inconsistent or in chaos, resulting to abnormal water composition in stools. This is the reason why people with diarrhea should always hydrate themselves with water and electrolytes to replace the lost fluids of the body. This disorder is usually caused by virus or bacteria, such as Salmonella and Amoeba from consumed contaminated food or water. This common disease usually lasts for only a day but some cases may last longer depending on the severity of the diseases. Next to talk about is the constipation. This disorder happens when the peristalsis or bowel movement in the digestive system is too slow. This is caused when the large intestine absorbs too much water, making the stool more compact, which also makes its passage difficult. This is usually caused when the person is low on fiber intake, abrupt change of diet, or even hormonal disorders. Remedies such as increase of fiber and water intake plus a healthy lifestyle is already enough. Serious medication is not really necessary unless constipation is really frequent. Next in the list is the hepatitis. This gastrointestinal disease is in the inflammation of the liver. Liver is a vital organ that filters the blood, helps fight infection, and causes nutrients in the digestive system. Hepatitis is commonly caused by excessive consumption of alcohol and other toxins. Some cases are also caused by viral infection that attacks the liver cells. 
Major symptom associated with hepatitis is the coloration of skin and the white part of the eye, or jaundice, into color yellow. It comes usually with fever, nausea, abdominal pain, and loss of appetite. It immediately needs medication attention because liver cells may die, causing liver failure or worse, death. Hepatitis is known to have different types and it is categorized into Hepatitis A and Hepatitis B. Hepatitis A is also known as the infectious hepatitis. This is caused when a person is exposed to Hepatitis A virus or HAV through consumed contaminated water or food. While Hepatitis B is the known serum hepatitis or the hepatitis B virus HBV this hepatitis is different from A as it is only transmitted through contaminated blood transfusion through usage of contaminated needles or through sexual interaction with an infected person this gastrointestinal disease is very much preventable through medical vaccinations. Next you understand is the gallstone located in the gallbladder. Gallbladder is part of the digestive system that is shaped like a pear just behind the liver organ. This organ controls the supply of bile or digestive fluid into the small intestine. These gallstones are the solid deposits of digestive fluid caused by too much cholesterol, bile salts, or calcium in the gallbladder. This disorder has no signs and symptoms when gallstones are being formed. However, when there are too much stones and it already blocks the entry point towards the small intestine, gallstones cause rapid and intensified pain in the upper right part or in the middle of the abdomen. It may be accompanied with a back pain between the shoulder blades, pain at the right shoulder, nausea, or even vomiting. Gallstones are also known as crystals, since it gives a crystal-like figure when detected in ultrasound results. This could only be treated through surgery to remove the gallstones in the gallbladder. However, if there are only a few presence of gallstones and it still does not have severe signs and symptoms that could hinder daily activities, surgery is really not necessary. But we need to manage the signs and symptoms through various means such as low-fat diet and dissolution therapy to address the gallstone. Now let us proceed to peptic ulcer. By definition, peptic ulcer are the open source in the digestive walls or lining. It could be in the esophagus lining, which is called esophageal ulcer, in the stomach walls, which is called the gastric ulcer, and in the duodenum lining of the small intestine, or called as the duodenal ulcer. The most common peptic ulcer happens at the stomach or the gastric ulcer. It was believed before that this is commonly caused by the excessive consumption of soda, coffee, spicy food, and even life stress. Although all of these are proven factors that can make the symptoms worse, this is not the main cause. It was discovered that all ulcers are caused by the presence of Helicobacter pylori or the long-term usage of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or called NSAIDs, such as ibuprofen like Advil and aspirin and naproxen sodium. People with peptic ulcer experiences a burning and sharp pain of the stomach. It could also come with heartburn, bloating, and nausea. As mentioned earlier, factors such as consumption of soda, coffee, fatty food, spicy food, and even stress makes the pain much worse. So take note of these things. 
people with peptic ulcer undergoes x-ray of the digestive tract and endoscopy to find out the severity of the disorder. Its treatment involves antibiotics and stomach acid suppressants to lessen the stomach acidity in which the bacteria thrive to live. Next to understand is the hemorrhoids. This digestive system disease is also known as piles, which occurs when the walls of the rectum and anus are stretched so thin when eliminating hard stools, causing the rectal blood vessels to be inflamed and swollen. This disease is most commonly affiliated with rectal bleeding or when there is a fresh blood observed with excreted stool. It often goes away within a day as long as the inflamed veins are not disturbed any further. However, despite the fact that it can easily go away, this disease could easily be prevented by eating high-fiber diet such as fruits like papaya, vegetables, and wheat that could help producing softer stools. However, there are severe cases of hemorrhoids that need medical attention, specifically surgery, to cases of rectal veins that remains external or outside the anal opening. Last to discuss, but definitely not the least, is the appendicitis. Appendicitis is the inflammation of the appendix. And appendix is a digestive organ that is three and a half inch long of a finger-shaped pouch. Appendicitis occurs when it is obstructed by a hard mass of stool, foreign body, or cancer cells. The blockage causes the accumulation of appendix secretions, resulting to enlargement of the organ, plus the accumulation of bacteria that also cause infection. This is very common to ages 10 to 30 years old. And people with appendicitis usually need an immediate surgery to remove the infected appendix because if the appendix will rupture inside the body, the build bacteria on it will infect the other digestive organs that could create another set of complications. Luckily, the human body can survive without the presence of our appendix organ. However, this luck may be applicable to appendicitis, but remember that every disorder that we have discussed comes with a certain pang of pain that we do not deserve to suffer. And we can dodge, prevent, and fight these disorders through one and only way. It is through proper healthy diet and lifestyle. Start making wiser decisions. And that is all for now. I hope you learned something from us today. Once again, this is Earth Pen.